Hi everyone, it's Friday. It's May 29th and it's our last day to talk about invertebrate animals. So just for a quick review, um, we started off by talking mostly about vertebrate animals and there's five major vertebrate animal groups. So we started with mammals. Can you think of the four other vertebrate groups? I give you a second, try to name at least two. Okay, so it's mammals. We had insects, no, what am I thinking? Not insects, they're invertebrate. We did mammals. We had reptiles, amphibians, birds, and fish. Those were the five vertebrate groups. And then we started talking more about invertebrate groups. And we had talked about insects. This week we also talked about arachnids and crustaceans. You might remember I showed you this. Okay, so we've been talking about arthropods. Right, that includes the insects, arachnids, crustaceans. It also includes myriapods, which are like millipedes and centipedes. So some of the other groups I mentioned, besides arthropods, are annelids, mollusks, cnidarians, and then of course there are many more. Uh, so we're going to explore some of those other ones today. Uh, all you will need is your journal. <clears throat> so go ahead and take that out. And let's actually set it up right now. So, open to a new page, today's date, you'll put in the upper right hand corner, and it is 5-29-20. And the title will be Invertebrates. We'll be taking some notes on which kind of animals belong in each group. And then I'll give you a chance to explore one that you would like to learn more about. Okay, so when you're ready, we'll move on. If you need more time, go ahead and pause. Okay. I'll be moving on. Here we go. Okay, so invertebrates. And that right there is an octopus. All right, an invertebrate is an animal without a backbone. About 95% of animal species are invertebrates. And so only about 5%, some say about 3% are vertebrate animals. And these animal species are classified into different groups or phyla. Those are the ones up here, the arthropods, annelids, mollusks, cnidarians, and um, I have a few more here. There's flatworms, roundworms, sponges, and echnoderms. So those are all examples of invertebrates. And we're gonna take a look at seven of these groups today. So it says take out your journal. We already did that. We put the dates and the title, and as I just said, we'll be writing seven different invertebrate groups with examples of animals that would be in each group. So let's get started. We'll start with a little topic sentence. So at the top, you'll write an invertebrate 
is an animal without a backbone. Here are some examples of animals from, I should say, seven different invertebrate groups. Let me fix that. <clears throat> so go ahead and write that in your journal. After you write uh, those first two sentences, you'll skip a line and write the number one. Don't write all uh, seven numbers at once because you don't know how much space you'll need for each one. So just write one. My pen is running out of ink, but it should look something like this. Write the two sentences, skip a line, and then the number one. I'm sure you'll need more time, so press pause if you do, and I'm going to move on. Okay. So for number one, you're writing cnidarians. Well, you don't pronounce that C <clears throat> at the beginning, it's silent. So cnidarians include jellyfish, coral, and sea anemones. Can you say that sea anemones? I always find it hard to do. Now coral, uh, most people think is a plant, but it's not. Um, it is an animal and it permanently roots itself into the ocean floor. Um, but it's not a plant because it does not make its own food like plants do. They actually have tiny tentacle like arms uh, and they use those to capture their food from the water and then sweep it into their mouths. So they do have mouths, they just look very different than ours. So in your journal, I'm gonna help you out for the first two, but you would write cnidarians include jellyfish, comma, coral, comma, and sea anemones, period. So when you're making a list, and here we're making a list of animals, you need commas to separate each item on your list. So jellyfish, comma, coral, comma, and sea anemones, period. You don't need commas if you only have two items on your list. But if you have more than two, you separate with commas.
Okay, hopefully you had time to write that. Um, I do want to go back and show you the jellyfish. And you can see the tentacles coming off to the side. Um, the mouth is actually in the middle. And then those tentacles often sting. So they can sting and stun their prey and then eat it. Jellyfish are probably my favorite animals. They're really beautiful to watch. That might be a good one to explore today. Okay, next one, mollusks. Mollusks include uh, octopus and snails. So that's exactly what you would write. Mollusks include, just like you did for number one, and then you only have two items on your list, so no commas, just octopus and snails. Oh, I was just trying to see if octopus should be octopuses or octopi. Apparently both are acceptable, but most things are saying octopuses. I have everything else plural, so I wanted to make that plural too, octopuses. So mollusks include octopuses and snails. And here's another example. It also includes mussels and clams. And they're soft-bodied invertebrates, right? So no exoskeleton. Um, though some of them do have a protective shell like the snail. If you need more time, go ahead and pause. I'm gonna move on. Here we have annelids. So that includes earthworms and then leeches. I don't know if you know much about leeches, but they can latch onto your skin and suck the blood out. Uh, but yeah, these these animals are all made up of ringed segments. So you can kind of see the, the little ring segments all throughout the body. If you look closely. So in your journal, just like the first two you're writing, um, annelids include and then earthworms and leeches. Okay. Oh, sorry, if you need more time, go ahead and pause. We're going to move to the next group. So this would be number four. And we have a big list here. We have four animals, so you will need your commas. Let me move that arachnid. I'm worried my face is hiding it on your screen. Move the word down just in case. Okay, so arthropods, 
These are the ones we have uh, talked about a lot this week. And they include crustaceans, comma, arachnids, comma, insects, comma, and myriapods, period. And myriapods, like I said earlier, include millipedes and centipedes. And oof, when I lived in Hawaii, we would get centipedes that looked just like the one in this picture. And they would come in the house and um, they were really hard to kill. Uh, the only way to really do it is you have to pick them up with tongs because otherwise their tail would come up and sting you. So you'd have to get it with tongs and then put it down the garbage disposal, you know, in the sink that kind of grinds things up. But otherwise there was no way. You couldn't just step on it or, oh, we even tried to cut it up with scissors once. <laughs> it did not work. But yeah, if they sting, it can really hurt. My father-in-law got stung and actually had to go to the hospital. He got stung in his sleep. So every night before bed, you know, we'd have to rip off the sheets, make sure there were none in there. Yeah. This is the one not great thing about living in Hawaii. Okay, I'll give you a second to finish writing this. Okay, if you need more time, pause. We'll go to the next one. Okay, these are flatworms. So I believe that would be number five. And flatworms include tapeworms and turbolaria. So tapeworms actually live in the intestines of animals. Some people can get them too. And usually you can get them from eating undercooked meat uh, or drinking contaminated water. People usually get them from uh, undercooked meat. Animals usually more from water. Um, probably undercooked meat too. But yeah, they, they are parasites, flatworms, and they invade other animals, including people, and live off of them. I don't think it's common in people. I've never met someone who had tapeworms. Uh, but you still need to be careful about what you're eating and drinking. Okay. Just a minute. Okay. So I'll finish writing that flatworms include tapeworms and tubularia. I'm gonna move on, so pause if you need more time. We're going to number six, round worms, which are really, really icky. 
And here I, we have heartworms. They're known for getting in the hearts of dogs, usually. And then ascarids. Those usually get in horses. But yeah, these are also parasites. So they feed off of other animals. They live off of other animals and feed off of them. They can cause a lot of damage to an animal. An interesting fact, uh, roundworms are the most widespread animal on earth. Billions of them can live in a single acre of soil. Billions on a single acre. So an acre, hmm, I'm trying to think how many acres our school would be. Our school is probably I don't know, maybe three, four, or five acres. It's hard for me to guess, but probably around there. Um, so billions and billions can live on just one acre. That's a lot. They live in the soil. Uh, and then they're not just parasites of animals, they can be parasites of plants too. And that is a heart. In the picture, right, they're heart worms, they attack the heart. They're not the most pleasant. I think for me, round worms are up there with mites, maybe even worse. Okay, I'm going to move on. So you should have written roundworms include heartworms and ascarids. Right? No commas needed. It's only two items. Okay, echinoderms. Let me move this word so my face isn't blocking it. Echinoderms include sea urchins, starfish, and sea cucumbers. Oh, I should add an S there. Whoops. I think starfish plural is still starfish. You can look that up while you're writing. Oh, the plural of starfish can be starfishes or starfish. I'm just gonna leave it as starfish. Uh, but yeah, echinoderm means spiny skin. Echno is spiny, derm is skin. So you may have seen a dermatologist before, someone, it's a doctor for your skin. Echinoderm is spiny skin. Uh, and that's definitely one thing you'll find in these animals. They all have spiny skin, some spinier than others. Uh, they also do have an internal skeleton of bone-like plates. Uh, they have a water-filled network of veins and thousands of tube feet that they can use to suction themselves to things. you go to the aquarium, sometimes they'll let you pick up a sea cucumber and kiss it for good luck. Okay, if you need more time, pause. This is number seven, it's the last one. I'll move on and give you your assignment for today. Uh, we are doing an invertebrate exploration. So you'll go 
to a different page in your journal, the next blank page. And at the top, just write invertebrate exploration. It should be capital since it's a title. I keep catching all these mistakes. Okay. Invertebrate exploration. The date is still 5-29-20. So, were there any animals you saw that you would like to learn more about? You can pick any invertebrate animal, and you have a whole list of them now in your journal. You, so you can pick any invertebrate animal to learn more about. I have a list on the lesson plan with books and videos to help you, or you can find information on your own. It's up to you. You may have an animal you want to learn about that's not on my list. Uh, so if that's the case, you can go to Get Epic and look it up. You can go to pbslearningmedia.org and look it up. YouTube has a lot of videos. Or you can just Google it, and usually a lot of articles will come up. After you have time, to learn about it, you will write two things in your journal and then type them onto Class Dojo under Invertebrate Exploration. And uh, that's your only assignment today. And this is also your typing practice for the day. So let me show you some of the animals on the lesson plan that you can pick from if you want. So <clears throat> I found a lot on Get Epic. There were centipedes, land snails, squids, and earthworms. Oh, about the snails, they can live on land or in water. So this one is specifically land snails. Uh, the Earthworms is a read aloud book. And then there's also a book on roly poly pill bugs, which is also a read aloud book if you like those. And remember, the books are great because you can just put it up on your screen while you write in your journal, and the information's right there. You don't have to read the whole book, just find two things you find interesting or that you learned. Uh, I also have octopuses, which is on Get Epic. So lots of books. And then there is a video on YouTube on jellyfish, my favorite. And you can look up just about any uh, other of the animals that I showed pictures of and we mentioned in our journal. Uh, there's even more I didn't even mention. Did you know sponges are invertebrates? They are, so there's a lot you can pick from. And then when you're writing, it's going to be the same format as all our other explorations. So you would write, I watched a video or I read a book on, then tell me which kind of invertebrate. Right, was it jellyfish? Was it octopus? Was it an earthworm? And then the two things you learned. I learned blank. I also learned blank. If you want to tell me more, that's great. Uh, just remember, you do need to type it. So that's it for today. Please have a wonderful weekend. And next week, we will be doing some measurement activities. That was one of the units we didn't really uh, get into uh, this year. So we'll just take the week to do some, some fun measurement things. We have some measurement art activities. Uh, we'll also practice measuring things around our houses. So if you can, try to find a ruler or a tape measure. Um, 
If you don't have any, I'll show you how to make your own ruler next week. All right, everyone. Uh, that's it. Bye.